So let's just skip the third main topic. And instead, let's go to main topic number four. Now, this is extremely, extremely out of left field. Like, I know we never talk about things like this. But, you know, I'm getting really, really concerned about cancel culture. And because you know what I think cancel culture is? If I'm being perfectly frank, I think cancel culture is a modern day version of book burning. It's a modern day version of book burn, burning. Basically, someone does not want, uh, they, they see something and they think, hey, this is offensive to me. I think this is dangerous. And as a result, I don't think anyone should read it. I don't. And we're seeing that a lot these days. We're seeing, I mean, Gone with the Wind, by the way, is back on HBO Max, but HBO Max did pull five episodes of South Park. Uh, We see Disney keeping movies and certain shorts behind the vault. We see TV episodes of popular shows being pulled. Heck, we see popular shows being pulled. We're seeing monuments torn down. I actually had someone... And if he sees this, you know, with all due respect, I'm sorry, who actually suggested that the Hall of Presidents at Disneyland, well, not Disneyland, Disney World should go, which is literally erasing history. It's like, what? It's like, look, I know not all the presidents are good people, but you're really going to start erasing history. You're going to start pretending like we're going to ignore the presidents. Those who do not, you know, learn from history and do not understand it and who do not read about it are forced to repeat it or doomed I should say they're doomed to repeat it you know uh one person actually I saw like a very interesting exchange online and it was kind of a meme but it made a lot of sense where someone where someone was like you know what why have I not read about the holocaust and someone said because it bothered people and they wanted to pretend it didn't happen that's what I think is happening that's what's going on to a certain extent. And now we're starting to burn books before they even get released. Now, I was brought to this attention by Robert Meyer Burnett, who is someone I would personally love to meet and talk to, but we don't know each other personally. He just tweeted it out. I think he's going to be talking about it on his podcast, too. So even though my channel won't do much to help him out, uh, at Robert, Byron, Robert Byer, Meyer Burnett, he, would, he does this stuff very well. But an upcoming young adult novel, Ember Days, has been canceled by the author. Now, this is scary. Alexandra Duncan has canceled her young adult novel, Ember Days, mere days after its cover reveal on BookPage. An hour after Duncan posted the cover reveal for the book, which was slated for a March 2021 release from Green Willow Books, an imprint of HarperCollins to her Twitter feed, Author Bethany C. Morrow questioned the representation within the novel, which was noted in the book's description. Naomi is the granddaughter of a powerful Gula conjure woman sent to Charleston to combat an evil force circling the city and hiding in plain sight as Daedre's protege. Uh, frankly, doesn't sound like something that would be particularly interesting to me, but here was the problem. Morrow said via a tweet, because it's always a tweet. I'm immediately concerned about an apparently white author not only writing a Gulag character, a very underpresented and erased people group, but then writing about a conjure woman and how what is she she is, quote, hiding in plain sight. Duncan immediately acknowledged Morrow's concern responding, I definitely struggled with whether it was okay for me to write about a culture outside my you know, this is a PR response. You know, I'm sorry, but as a writer, you're not always thinking about like, oh, is is it my place to... If she really... If, if Alexandra Duncan really was concerned about this, you know, she probably would never have even written the book. Because she would have came to the same conclusion that everyone who does this sort of thinking, you know, like, I'm not, you know, qualified to write this. You know, it's a young adult book. And, you know, before we even can... Well, I, I'm going to hold that for a minute. Hold on. I definitely struggled with whether it was okay for me to write about a culture outside my own and especially about the difficult topic of passing, which Naomi does for part of the book while going undercover in an all-white magical society. Further explaining that her decision to write from the perspective of a character with Gala uh, Gichi heritage stemmed from an, from an interest in writing about folk magic traditions from her area 
of the South. So she was just interested in folk magic traditions. Now, in a statement yesterday from Duncan, she refers to exchanges with author colleagues following the cover reveal, which made her aware that her misguided attempt to write a book that was inclusive of all cultures of Charleston and the lo Low Country, where the book was set, she... What? Explaining that her own limited worldview as a white person led her to incorrectly assume she could responsibly depict the culture. Duncan said, clearly, the fact that I did not see the signs of the problems in my book's pr premise in my research or conversations about the book is evidence that I was not the right person to try to tell the story. You know, it's a fantasy. I can tell right now, it's a fantasy. You don't need to have it correct all the time. It's a fantasy. In fact, now here's what I'm going to show. I'm, I've, actually, I've actually had these books on the side for like a few months because I'm working on... Not a few months, for a few weeks, because I'm actually working on a video about this. But let me show you some mangas. Uh, Naruto by, um, by Masashi Kishimoto. This is about ninjas and, ninja and spirits of ninjas. Guess what? This guy ain't a ninja in real life. Nobody cares. It's a story. What about this one? Yu-Gi-Oh! Kazuki Takahashi. Now, I know it's about a card game, but before it even gets to the cards, it's about Egyptian culture and, and um, you know, artifacts and mystic games and everything. It's probably not that culturally respectful to Egyptians. It's not offensive, but it's not taking everything, you know, in Egypt culture at face value. It's a story. Nobody cares. What about Yu Yu Hakusho? About a detective who dies, well, a high schooler who dies and becomes a spirit detective for the dead. Guess what? Um, most people cannot scientifically say what happens after death. We don't actually know. Just a story. And here's the big one. And this is probably going to get re-released next year. Although maybe not, considering where we're heading right now. Shaman King. Um, you know, Hiroyuki Takai, or Takei, I think it's Takei actually was interested in Buddhism and Christianity and shaman. And here's the thing. I remember years ago when I told someone that I was reading the series, this really cool series that I like called Shaman King. And it was a friend at church. And the friend at church like said, do you know what a shaman is? And he explained to me what a shaman was. It's like, that's not what I'm reading. And so I showed him the book and he, he realized like, okay, it's called Shaman King, but it's this person's version of a shaman. And guess what? Nobody cares. And by the way, also, J.K. Rowling isn't actually a wi wizard. Tolkien isn't actually a hobbit. Um, you know, is Tolkien the wrong person to be writing The Hobbit because he's not a little person? Or can we just enjoy the fact that it's a darn good book? I mean, was Charles Dickens an orphan? I mean, maybe he was. I don't know. But even if he wasn't, I don't care. Oliver Twist is a great book. You don't always have to be what you're writing about. Books like movies are fantasies. And you know what one of the problems when you start doing things like this? You start denying, you know, voices. Like, you know, there are writers who have written books about, like, for example, Lee Harper, To Kill a Mockingbird. That is one of the greatest books ever written. One of the greatest books ever, ever written. Now... Is Lee Harper not allowed to write about, you know, discrimination in the South because she was a white woman? I mean, granted, the book took place from a young girl's point of view, but it got into the nitty gritty of racism and how people felt about it at the time. And should she not be allowed to share these experiences? Or is that like, you know... A, like maybe that's not the story maybe to be more sensitive it needs to be a black author writing that book from the black perspective I, I don't know i think both versions of that story would be valid but i don't understand why we're going after it. and he here's the other thing so duncan also addressed and rejected the misconception that the cancelization is censorship noting it is wholly my decision to withdraw the book in order to mitigate the harm I have done. I have work to do to improve myself in my writing, and I will continue to do it. No, you didn't harm anyone. One person brought this to your attention. One person. You don't know if you would have harmed anyone unless the book came out. And, you know, here's the thing. You're freaking out because here's the thing. Twitter, a lot of people who are on Twitter, they think it's real life. It's not. It is not. I think this book would have come out and... 
To be frank, I don't even know if anyone would have read it. Just because that's the book market the, these days. But if people read it, yeah, it would have been because of the controversy. You know, it might have been a good book. Who knows? But it is censorship. It is self-censorship. You basically wrote a book. You spent probably a long time researching this, writing it. You put your blood, sweat, and tears into that book. And one person tweets you with an objection. And you decide to pull it. Because you don't want the fallout. You don't want the fallout. And look, here's the thing. We've had a lot of fallout. This is just YouTube. Jeffree Star, Jay, Shane ja Dawson, they're looking to be canceled. Jenna Marbles decided to leave the platform of YouTube because she was upset that her past videos might have offended people, even though it's like, you know, those videos are old. They're old. She doesn't make those types of videos anymore. She can move on from them, but people keep trying to... I believe people. someone tried to cancel her. I believe somebody tried to cancel her. And here's the other thing. I, I really do fear for comedy because, you know, comedy is offensive. It really is. I mean, are, are we going to cancel Chris Rock next because he says the N-word? I Where does this stop? I mean, so here's a funny story. My wife is reading Fahrenheit 451. And she wanted a good book to read, and I recommended it. And I think she's halfway through the book. And she said something that was actually really telling. She said, what's scary about this book is how it doesn't feel like it's fiction. Because this is what we're doing. We're pulling movies we don't like. We're censoring TV shows we don't like. We're, we're burning books before they're published. Like, sorry, I consider this to be a book burning. Also, Woody Allen was going to release a book. There was an outcry and the publisher backed off. Now, another publisher did publish the book, but it's like, you you cannot debate ideas and words unless they're there. And book burning has always been dangerous. I mean, growing up, I grew up in a pretty religious household. And although my parents were not about book burnings, there were people in the church who felt that the origin of species should be burned. They felt that um, that a simple man should be burned. They actually put, they were actually take part in the challenging of the books. Like they did not want Harry Potter in the libraries. It, it kind of got personal when um, my pastor wanted Bone by Jeff Smith removed from the children's section, even though it is a children's book. So I don't agree with this. I don't, and this is getting scary. Now then, Old Dirty Dasher has said, but he's Japanese. And that actually kind of proves my point a little bit more. He's Japanese. Like, what, like, what gives him the right to write about any of these things? Answer, every right. Because he's interested in them. He's interested in those topics. Therefore, he should be allowed to write about them. Now, Old Dirty Dasher also said, The problem is that book publisher won't give a Gula writer the same chance to tell a story. Would you ask a person with sight, with sight how it feels to be blind? Well, uh, you know, funny thing. White people have ri written stories and directed movies about being blind. Stan Lee isn't blind, and he created Daredevil. And it's funny because I kind of think about Daredevil now. Like, what would happen if Daredevil was created today? Because back then, Stan Lee did have concerns about creating Daredevil. Because it's like, he was wondering, like, is the blind community going to think this is a joke or, or something? And the blind community did not care. They, they were like, we're glad that there's a blind superhero. I mean, we, we don't know what it looks lo like. And, you know, if the comics didn't come in Braille, unfortunately. So special comics had to be made so that blind people could read them. But, you know, it's like you are allowed to write about experiences other than their own. That's what research is for. That's what research is for. for. And, you know, you know what? A Gullah writer needs to actually write that book you know she can write that book too she can sh shop it around but i'm getting tired i'm even worried about the entertainment because it's like you know you're now starting to narrow 
what people can and can't do. And now, now I'm seeing true segregation. Like, you can't write this unless you're this. You can't act in this unless you're you're this. I mean, Shredder in the original Ninja Turtles show was a Japanese character voiced by Uncle Phil from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And Starbright was voiced, and Penny from Inspector Gadget was voiced by a black woman. Should they not be allowed to voice those roles? Because that's what's great about being a voice actor. You can be anyone. You can act. You can act. You can write. It's all fiction. So, but this is a dangerous, dangerous precedent. Woman spends a long time writing this book. I don't even know if it's any good or not. But one person tweets at her, and just because she can see, she can see that the mob is coming for her, so she decides she's not going to publish that book. This is censorship. This is censorship. So, I I don't I don't know. There's probably going to be a lot. Uh, I have a lot more to say about this, but we we won't. I have one more topic I want to discuss. But in the meantime, I am curious. What do all of you at home think? I would sincerely like your opinion on this. I know this is a touchy subject. However, you know the drill. Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.